Greetings, my followers. In this video, I'm going to present you assignment problem that has restrictions. It's a kind of problem that puts some form of restriction on assigning jobs to employees. So let's dive into the problem. A manufacturing company is seeking to determine a cost-effective ways of assigning five employees to five tasks. The data collected from past manufacturing practice indicates that the undermentioned cost in is required for completing the tasks by each employee. Employee's medical history is witness that employee 2 and employee 3 are allergic to task 4 and task 5 respectively. The question is determine the optimal assignment schedule. The broken lines in the matrix are an indication that employee 2 can't be assigned to task 4 and employee 3 can't be assigned to task 5 because of their health problem. Hungarian method is a widely practiced assignment method that enables us to determine cost-effective ways of assigning tasks to employees. In the given cost matrix, the number of rows is equal to the number of columns, which is equal to 5. In other words, the given assignment model is balanced assignment model. Hence, we can directly proceed to the steps of Hungarian method without the need for balancing. Step 1, row and column reduction. As the first sub-step of this step, Reduce the initial matrix by subtracting the smallest element in each row from every element in that row. Before moving to identify the smallest element in each row of the given cost matrix, let's replace the broken lines in the matrix by the symbol of infinity. This is to mean that assigning task 4 to employee 2 and task 5 to employee 3 will cause unprecedented high costs and his, this employee shouldn't be assigned to these tasks. For calculating the row reduced entries, let's identify the smallest element in each row. Row 1 minimum is 19, row 2 minimum is 21, row 3 minimum is 21 again, row 4 minimum is 20, and row 5 minimum is 22. Let's copy a blank 6x6 table at this right hand side for the row reduced entries, and then continue the deduction from row 1, that's 26 minus 19 is equal to 7, 25 minus 19 is equal to 6, 26 minus 19 is equal to 7 again, 24 minus 19 is equal to 5, and 19 minus 19 is equal to 0. In row 2, 26 minus 21 is equal to 5. 27 minus 21 is equal to 6. 21 minus 21 is equal to 0. Infinity minus 21 is equal to infinity. Infinity is an imaginary very big number, and deducting real number from this number gives the infinity itself. 28 minus 21 is equal to 7. In row 3, 22 minus 21 is equal to 1. 24 minus 21 is equal to 3. 27 minus 21 is equal to 6. 21 minus 21 is equal to 0, and infinity minus 21 is equal to infinity. In row 4, 28 minus 20 is equal to 8, 20 minus 20 is equal to 0, 25 minus 20 is equal to 5, 21 minus 20 is equal to 1, and 23 minus 20 is equal to 3. In row 5, 24 minus 22 is equal to 2, 27 minus 22 is equal to 5, 29 minus 22 is equal to 7, 25 minus 22 is equal to 3, and 22 minus 22 is equal to 0. This resulted matrix solved row reduced matrix. When we proceed to column reduction, from this row reduced matrix, subtract the smallest element in each column from every element in that column. Again, for this reduction, let's identify the smallest element in each column. Column 1 minimum is 1, and the minimum of the raised four columns, that's from column 2 to column 5, is 0. Again, let's copy a blank table at this right hand side for the column reduced entries. In subtracting column 1 minimum from every element in that column, 7 minus 1 is equal to 6, 5 minus 1 is equal to 4, 1 minus 1 is equal to 0, 8 minus 1 is equal to 7, and 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. The rest four column values have to be copied as they are, because their column minimum is 0, and his subtracting 0 will not change their values. This right hand side matrix is called column reduced matrix, and it is this matrix that we use in the next steps. Step 2, row scanning and column scanning. In this step, what we are going to do is that we will find the minimum number of straight lines that must be drawn through the rows and columns of the given matrix so that all the zeros in the matrix will be covered. Again, this is a step-by-step -step approach that starts from row scanning and moves to column scanning. In the row scanning process, we will examine the rows of the reduced matrix successively, and whenever a row with single zero is found, we will enclose that zero with rectangle and eliminate a column containing that zero by drawing a vertical line through it. If a row contains no zero or more than one zero, we will skip it. The only zero of row one is located under column five, so we will enclose this zero in rectangle and delete column five by drawing a vertical line through it. We can also enclose the only zero of row two in rectangle and eliminate column three by drawing a vertical line through it. Row three contains two zeros, so we will skip it. 
Row 4 contains only one zero, that's the zero under column 2. So we will insert this zero in rectangle and delete column 2 by drawing a vertical line through it. Now we conclude the row scanning process and we will continue to column scanning. In the column scanning step, we will examine each unlined column successively. And whenever we find a column with single zero, we will enclose that zero in rectangle and eliminate the row containing that zero by drawing a horizontal line through it. We will skip the lined column and the unlined column containing no zero or more than one zero. Column one contains only one zero, that's the zero in row three. So we can insert this zero in rectangle and eliminate row three by drawing a horizontal line through it. Now we cover all the zeros in the matrix by the possible minimum number of straight lines. So let's move forward to the requirement that specify what should be done next. If the minimum number of straight lines drawn to cover the zeros is the same as the number of rows or equivalent columns, the solution is optimal, since an optimal assignment following the zeros inside the rectangle can be made. Otherwise, go to step three. The number of rows or columns in the given cost matrix is five, but the number of straight lines drawn to cover the zeros in the matrix is four, that's three vertical lines and one horizontal line. Since the number of lines drawn to cover the zeros is less than the number of rows, the solution is not optimal, since we have to proceed to step three. Step three, identify the smallest unlined element, subtract this smallest unlined element from every unlined element, and add it to every element as the intersection of two lines. Elements covered by a single line will remain the same, meaning they are copied to the next table as they are. Here is a table for the name interest. Elements in the current matrix are three types. First, these 14 elements inserted in the blue colored rectangular boxes, which are covered either by single horizontal or a single vertical lines. So these elements will be copied to the next table as they are. The second types are these eight elements, which are inserted in red rectangular box. So the smallest unlined element, that's one, has to be subtracted from each of these unlined elements. That's six minus one is equal to five, five minus one is equal to four, four minus one is equal to three, infinity minus one is equal to infinity, seven minus one is equal to six, one minus one is equal to zero, one minus one is equal to zero, and three minus one is equal to two. The third types are these three elements, which are located at the intersection of horizontal and vertical lines. So the smallest unlined element has to be added to these three elements. That's three plus one is equal to four, six plus one is equal to seven, infinity plus one is equal to infinity. Following the completion of step three operations, we have to return to step two, that's the row and column scanning steps, in order to cover all the zeros in the matrix by the possible minimum number of straight lines. Row one contains only one zero, that's the zero in the column five. So we can insert this zero in rectangle and delete column five. Row two also contains only one zero, that's the zero under column three. Again, we will enclose this zero in rectangle and eliminate column three by drawing a vertical line through it. Row three and row four each contains more than one zero, since we have to skip them. We can also insert the only undeleted zero of row five in rectangle and eliminate column one by drawing a vertical line through it. In moving to column scanning, we have to skip column one because it's already deleted. The only zero of column two is the one in row four. So we have to enclose this zero in rectangle and delete row four by drawing a horizontal line through it. We will skip column three because it's already deleted. We can enclose the only zero of column four with rectangle and eliminate row three by drawing a horizontal line through it. At this moment, all the zeros in the matrix are covered by lines. So let's check whether the number of straight lines drawn to cover the zeros is equal to the number of rows or not. Number of rows is equal to five and number of lines drawn to cover the zeros is equal to five. Since the number of straight lines drawn to cover the zeros is equal to the number of rows, the solution is optimal. Thus, an optimal assignment following the zeros inside the rectangle can be made. For such assignment, let's draw a table containing seven rows and three columns and demonstrate employ, task, and cost in row one. Also, let's copy the final and the given cost matrix at this right-hand side in order to identify the assignments and the costs. Operator one is assigned to task five. Operator 1 cost is 19 bill to complete task 5. Operator 2 is assigned to task 3. Operator 2 cost is 21 bill to complete task 3. Operator 3 is assigned to task 4. Operator 3 cost is 21 bill to complete task 4. Operator 4 is assigned to task 2. Operator 4 cost is 20 bill to complete task 2. Operator 5 is assigned to task 1. Operator 5 cost is 24 bill to complete task 1. Total optimal cost is equal to 19 plus 21 plus 21 plus 20 plus 24, which is equal to 105 birth.
At last, let's check the correctness of this optimal 100 fiber by using the formula optimal cost is equal to the sum of the row minimums plus the sum of column minimums plus the smallest element chosen in step 3 to add on or subtract from other elements, which is equal to the sum of row minimums is 19 plus 21 plus 21 plus 20 plus 22 plus the sum of column and minimums except this one, all other column and minimums are zero. So we have to add only this one plus the smallest element chosen in step three is one, which is equal to the sum of these values is equal to 105. The equality of these two optimal costs tells us that the optimal cost we determined is correct and the assignment we made is truly optimal. By this, I conclude this episode. Goodbye.